Hey everybody, Tim Osterman from Rems and St. Mary's High School in Rems in Iowa. Um, coming here thanks to Nicholas Banstra for putting us up on YouTube and getting us a little bit of time up there. Uh, we're going to be talking today about covering the spread in the 3-3 flex defense and uh, really excited about the opportunity. Um, here's the outline. It's kind of what we're kind of shooting for here today. I'll talk a little bit about who I am, uh, just so you guys have a little bit of context. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our program, kind of where, we're, where we've been at, what we believe in, uh, especially defensively, uh, what our philosophy is going to end up being. Um, and then again, this is a little bit of a clinic about the 3-3 flex, something we really believe in. Um, and uh, typically it's about the alignment of the defense that's really critical for us. And, um, and then we'll kind of move on to covering some of the things like the trap and the zone read looks and then some uh, the speed options. I know those are becoming a lot more common in eight man. So I want to talk about how we cover those. And if those help you out, fantastic. If not, then, uh, um, then I, hopefully you can take something away from it. So just a little bit who I am, uh, just a little bit. I, I'm, I've been here at Rems and St. Mary's since 2012, the fall of it. And I started coaching football in 2013. Um, I, I've been able to call plays. I've been able to uh, be a part of the defensive staff. I've been an assistant for seven years. I've now been the head coach for two, 2020, 2021. Um, so, yeah, and, and I've kind of bounced around inside coaching some different things. So um, I've been lucky enough to have a, a little bit of knowledge about everything else. But, um, again, this is one of those things that you're always continually learning. And so this is – uh, one of my first years as the defensive coordinator, um, I was defensive coordinator back in 2015 and now um, again here in 2021. And uh, it, it was a fun experience to redo this and to now have the ability to talk about it is uh, was actually really kind of fun. So uh, again, let's get into a little bit about our program. So in terms of our program, uh, what we've tried to highlight and uh, I'll, I'll kind of go through just a brief history. We started football in 1999. Um, and it was one of our first varsity seasons it was 99, 2000, something about, about like that. Four years later, coach Ken Hayek go ahead and brought us to a state title. And, uh, we've had intermittent success right after that. Uh, and then we went through a little bit of a lull from about 2011 to about 2015, didn't have any winning records. Uh, and then we had a former player, Ryan Hayek come back and he ended up uh, jumpstarting our program. So you kind of see some district title, uh, you know, district champions in four in 2006 and 2009. Then there's that little bit of a lull there. And then when Ryan came back, uh, his second season, 2017 is when we kind of took off. So uh, 2017, 2019, 2020, 2021, we've been district champions. We've had a, a, a ton of talent. Um, and we've played really good. So one of the things that we really try to do is get better every single day. Um, and we really think that speaks to our mission statement, to ask Chuck justly, to love tenderly, and walk humbly with our God. Um, we just want to build tough football players, okay? And we want to do things to the best of our ability and get better every single day. Um, and again, we're developing young men to be champions for life. We really believe that. We really think about that in terms of um, – are our football players going to be good kids coming out? And, and that's not always true. Not everybody's in the same situation. Not every kid's built the same way. But uh, hopefully we can kind of help give them a moral compass a little bit. Um, and again, as we build that brotherhood, we build that unity, uh, we have to understand that's done through service and sacrifice. And as we continue to be good people in the community, uh, this entire school is built off of that. So we really want to be a, a part of it. We want our kids to feel like they belong and that they um, are playing for the guys that came before them and for the guys that come after them. So um, again, our mission statement is pretty clear about developing mentally tough athletes every single day. And if we can do those things, we're going to be in pretty good shape. So then as a program. We took these from Randy Jackson in terms of his core values. We want to bring energy. We want to have toughness. We want to be disciplined every single down of the ball game. And, you know, we strive to do those things. Uh, we, we don't get them done every single time, but that's what we're striving to do. We want to be competitively excellent every single day in practice, every single game. And then, of course, when we talk about unity, 
you know, we want to build brotherhood. You know, I talk about loving my kids all this every, every day, you know, after every game, make sure I tell them I love them because they, you know, they put in a lot of time and effort. They put their body out there for the goodness of the, of the team and for the benefit of the school. And uh, we just want to make sure that we understand that. And then every single day we want to finish and we have a finish to our drills. We have a finish to our practice. We have a finish uh, at our game. And it's very specific on how we're going to do those things and to do them very, very well. A lot of those things are attributed to me. You know, I'm, I'm really the third head coach since 2017. Um, you know, Ryan was a really good head coach. We had another one come in 20, um, 18, he took over and he did a really good job in terms of putting our defense on the map and, and what it was and what it's not going to be. And uh, and then I've kind of had the benefit of learning from both of those guys. So we've had some really good seasons here in 2020 and 2021. So um, again, just a little bit about our program. It's We're not a big school. We're only about 74 kids total in the entire high school. So even mathematically, well, sorry, 74, I'm thinking about the wrong number right now. We're actually about 68 kids in the entire high school. And so we're about 34 to 38 boys. So, you know, we had about 24 on our kid, our kids this year uh, on our football team. And by the end, we had about six kids that were playing. So we were down to, you know, around 18, 19 type kids um, on the, on the field. So we're not a real big school. So, uh, you know, we're in a town of 1500. So we're going to pull every single one of the kids that we can get and, and they work their tails off. And again, having a mission statement, having those guys that have come before you, you feel a little bit of that legacy. And, and this defense that we're going to be talking about today is definitely built to that legacy. Um, so here are our philosophies defensively as we kind of get into the defensive clinic. Um, and again, a, a real opportunity for us to present what we think and we are uh, hopefully living these values and, and what we're trying to do every single day. But uh, the number one thing that uh, this defense, and we started this defense back in 2016, and it was actually a variation of the defense that they ran in the state championship uh, season in 2004. And so when Ryan brought that back in 2016, one of the main things that we needed to do is we need to be able to stop the run. That's a core value. Then we wanted to be very physical at the line of scrimmage. And you'll see that it's been prevalent through our program uh, since 2016. It's just what we have to be. You have to be physical at the line of scrimmage. You have to be able to hit people. Um, we do want to limit big plays. Now, in eight-man football, that becomes a little bit of a problem. So how you align and, and what you teach your kids and how you're going to cover people is an important factor. And a lot of times, if you don't have – Athletes, it's difficult to align to stop the run and the pass all at the same time. So you have to kind of give and take with what you're uh, able to do there. So we've been lucky since about 2016, like I said, had really good athletes that we've been able to man cover people on one end and, and play really good against the run. But, uh, and, but now we've kind of developed a little bit since then as well. We've developed some zones uh, that have helped eliminate some bigger plays. But again, it's, it comes down to tackling, it comes down to fit, and making sure your kids know where they're going to go. And so we're not always 100% um, in every situation, but uh, th those are the things that we strive for. Um, and we want to be good at tackling. Uh, we've, we've been good and bad intermittently since 2016. We've had some really good seasons. We've had some all-state middle linebackers, um, basically a streak of them since 2016. Um, but we have to really concentrate on our tackling. We have to continue to do that every single day or else it's never going to get better. So you emphasize it. You try to find some good coaching points. You try to put it into your practice somewhere uh, and do really good in terms of coaching the little things. And it's not always easy. I mean, not every kid is just a willing tackler, but if you can find those kids and this defense tends to uh, accentuate a really good athletic tackler, so if you have one of those guys, this defense is really going to be an accentuation of his abilities. And then we've tried to do a really good job with takeaways as well. Uh, fumbles are kind of a little quirky for us. We're not always the best fumble recovery team in terms of like knocking the ball out and then getting on top of it. I mean, obviously, we still pick up the ones that are loose or whatnot. Uh, but what we really have tried to improve is when the ball is in the air and when there's opportunity for it. And in those situations, I, I think playing a zone and covering certain things do a really good job of uh, helping you get into situations where you can actually intercept the, uh, the football. And I think we were up around 
um, 18 or 19 interceptions on the season, which might not be a, a great number, but that was that's better than where we have been. So we've improved our interceptions. So we really want to emphasize that and continue to take opportunities to get the offense off the ball or off the field and then do a good job of trying to be good on fourth down. We, we got about four or five different fourth down stops this year, which uh, again, we can kind of count that as a turnover as well. Uh, we were able to get the offense off the field and get our offense the ball back. So above all else, we're going to play fast, have easy keys. We're going to be able to fly around. We're going to be physical. We're going to be disciplined. One of the main things about being disciplined is that we have to line up correctly. We have to do our job and we can't beat ourselves, right? So we can't be jumping off sides. We can't be jumping into somebody else's gap. We can't be covering other people that are going to be covered by the back end guys. We have to be doing our job. And so that's one of the more difficult things that you see when you watch film is where kids start to do different jobs or what is my job and so on and so forth. So being very detailed is an important aspect of what our defense does. And so we're going to continue to do those things as best we can. And of course, all the physical aspects of the game is being able to be tacklers um, day in and day out. And again, the more seniors and juniors that you have, the kids that are physically ready to play the game, I think the better off your tackling ultimately gets, especially with really good uh, coaching on the back end of that. Uh, these five rules of defense are kind of what we try to live by with all of our players. Uh, these were taught to me uh, back kind of when I was in middle school and, and into high school. Uh, but as I kind of got back into coaching, uh, a mentor uh, coach of mine who was my middle school and high school coach uh, reiterated these to me and what these five things. And we really teach four of them, the top four. The last one really kind of taking care of your one eighth is more of a mental thing, but it's a defensive thing. Defense is really about how you fit things and flying around and doing your job, right? So it's not really an ad lib type thing. Defense is really about you've got to be in this spot and I've got to rely on you to be on this spot. Uh, where you got to be. But if anything, even if you take these four things away, you know, if you're a, a, a coach just coming down into uh, trying to figure out how to coach defense, these four things are really, really important. So uh, number one, go meet your blocker, right? So for a defensive lineman, that's really, really easy. But for a second level defender and a third level defender, those are difficult. So understanding what your key is and getting downhill, those are important aspects of what we're trying to achieve here. So go meet your blocker. Don't allow them space because you're just going to give the offense yards. You got to go meet them. You have to go to the line of scrimmage and make sure that they're not going any further than that. So we try to talk about that and drill that in practice that they've got to get downhill and they've got to meet the blocker and try to minimize as much space as possible. Second one we talked about is staying parallel to the line of scrimmage. So don't get too vertical. Don't get, you know, don't get yourself turned one way or another. Make sure you stay parallel. And a lot of that's so that you can keep your outside arm and leg free, which is really the fourth rule. But if you stay parallel to the line of scrimmage, you can move both directions pretty easily. If you start turning your shoulders, you might miss things that happen behind you, or you're now biomechanically um, in, a, in a bad spot because now you've already turned and if you get a reverse now you have to turn your body around which might not sound like a lot but it can mean those fractions of a second that allow you to make tackles so if you can stay parallel to the line of scrimmage and go meet your blocker those are two really important rules okay uh, fighting pressure is really more so about um, a defensive lineman and a second level defender but for us it's really important to understand that if you feel pressure from your outside shoulder, more than likely the ball is going to be going in that direction. So you've got to fight that. And more importantly, we don't fight pressure by going underneath of it, right? When we talk about fighting pressure, we're talking about going up and over that shoulder. So many times when we're designing offensive things, we're going to be talking about for our blockers, he has to go vertically up the field or he's got to go back around us. He can't go through us. So for us, when we talk about things defensively, we want to stay on top of the runner as much as possible, right? So if we get a down block from our defensive lineman, we've got to fight up and through that, not underneath of it, because that's where they want us to go. They want us to go underneath of this uh, block as much as possible, because then you're sealed, right? If their defensive or excuse me, their offensive end or their offensive guard is worth his salt, he can seal you inside the play and their runner gets outside. If you can fight that pressure and fight that shoulder, okay, more than likely you can help 
take away the gap they're trying to create. And that's the important piece of the puzzle, right? So making sure that you can fight that pressure to help eliminate and destroy the block and get back into the gap, especially down blocks. And that'll be a big thing when we talk about this defense. Um, and again, one of the main things is almost should be rule number one, keep your outside arm and leg free. You have to be able to do those things. And maybe that seems inherent to some of you, but for me, one of the main things was just being able to teach kids your outside arm and leg have to be free. He's not going here. He's not going to my outside arm at all. He is going to run this way or no way. So if he runs my outside arm and leg, I get to make the tackle. If I can keep my outside arm and leg free and maintain my gap, I know the runner's not coming here. And that's just a really good puzzle piece of that defense. And again, taking care of your one eighth is doing that. Keep your outside arm and leg free, fighting pressure, meeting your blocker, staying uh, parallel to the line of scrimmage, all important things, all important things in playing really good defense. So hopefully we try to talk about things, uh, these things every single year with our kids and every single day, but this is an important aspect of our defense. So again, if you take anything away from the talk, hopefully those will be those five things. So we're going to talk about our, what we call the three, three flex defense. Now, a lot of that is referring to the alignment of the offensive, uh, excuse me, the defensive line to the uh, offense. And a lot of that flexing is talking about the defensive ends are flexed inside. I think a lot of times if you play like NCAA football or if you play Madden or something like that, um, I believe these would be referred to as like a bear type front. Um, and in uh, older vernacular, it'd be more like a 5-1, okay, in terms of what it is. So uh, you can kind of see a, a base alignment here, but uh, we'll talk about exactly what we're talking about. So this is our basic setup versus a tight formation. So in reality, uh, what we're talking about here is how do you align to like a shotgun T formation, a an eye formation, maybe a wing formation, so on and so forth. So again, in these situations, the way that we're aligning here is that we're basically having our defensive ends flexed in. So one of the common defenses that we see is a, depending on how you want to describe it, like a 3-2-3 three, three or a 3-4-1, three, however you want to look at that. Um, we really feel like the alignment of the ends, the nose uh, and the mic, these uh, four players in the box gives us the best opportunity to stop the run. Now, a very similar variation to this would be like a 4-2-2. Two, two. Okay, so for those of you that are new to eight-man football, having two tackles, two defensive ends, and two middle linebackers. There's, there's benefits to both, and essentially putting six guys in the box dedicated to stopping the run. In this case, what we're looking at is we're looking at three guys across here, um, putting pressure on the guard center guard complex. And what we feel like this does, especially in like a five down lineman, or even in the next situation where you have four down linemen, when you talk about those situations, you are forcing the offense to use a tight end to block your defensive end or to use a wing back to block your defensive end. Now, that might not seem like a big deal and feel like you're giving up a blocker, but at the same time, the man who's guarding that tight end now has a really simple read. He is, this tight end is either working vertically on a route or he's working, working vertically to go block the corner. Either way, okay, he is going to tell you everything that's going to happen. That's a really good key for us. And one of the major parts uh, that help us stop the run is just the alignment of this defensive end inside, okay? The second thing that we really talk about is that this defensive end can put his hands on the guard. This now makes it very difficult for this guard to get up to the middle linebacker, right? So a lot of you would think, okay, well, we're just gonna come vertically to the mic, down to the defensive end, kick out this linebacker and we're one-on-one -on -one with the corner. You're right, you can do those things. But by having the defensive end step down towards this guard and to minimize that gap and to create an opportunity for the mic to get over top of this, okay? And that's one of the main things. We'll talk about this a little bit in the video. 
the Mike linebacker in this defense is your number one defensive player. You want him to be able to run sideline to sideline and to make tackles. If you can get your defensive ends and your linebackers to maintain their gaps, the alignment of the players along the defensive line allows the Mike linebacker basically to run free. Okay. And a lot of that's just because the guard either has to come block this end or come block the mic. Okay. Those are really about the only two things that he can variationally do with a play to his side. And again, there's a combination that he could go down and around, but again, that just allows the mic to run free. Okay. So for us, one of the main things is that we want the mic to be able to run free. We want the corners to have easy reads off of these defensive ends. And we want to have these linebackers in position so that they can turn the play back inside to our defensive end and Mike and our nose and our corner, right? And so this is what we talked about with leverage uh, uh, in terms of defense being able to force players back in. So you'll see a little bit of that. Uh, again, as we talk about the spread run game, you really won't see too many of these guys out in outside leverage. Might have one or two clips, uh, but that's the basic premise. This guy's going to turn this thing back inside and, uh, and then everybody's got to fill back up uh, underneath of all of that clutter. So you can kind of see some base alignments and gap responsibilities here. You know, I'll allow you guys to read that. I'm not going to have to overread that, but you can see some of the responsibilities we talked about here with the Mike linebacker, right? You're going to flow to the ball, you clear the A to the B to the C. So really we're starting him at about three to four yards off the ball. You know, if he's a faster reader, you can probably, you know, get him a little bit tighter. If he's a little bit slower, you might want to back him up a little bit. Um, and we mess with his alignment a little bit. Obviously, third and long, we might back him up quite a bit. Um, if we're going against an option team that has a lot of, like they have a lot of stuff going on in this backfield here, um, where you know one guy's going one way, another guy's going another way, and then the quarterback's going to pop out another, we might back him up a little bit and allow him to kind of take some read steps forward. But again, back him up to give him time to see things before he reacts rather than being up here. You get him too close up here sometimes, it allows this guard to get up vertically uh, to him. And, and that's not going to be a good thing for us. Okay. Uh, but you can, you know, see some different things here in terms of the responsibilities who is responsible for the a gap, uh, the nose tackle. And for us, we've been lucky since 2016 to have guys that can handle uh, two gaps. And, it, and really it's not so much you know, bouncing one way or another. He's really just got to get up and through this center, right. And hang on to him because the mic's going to run. The mic will help cover some things. Now we've had some kids recently that have been really good at punch and look, right? And being able to work down the line of scrimmage. And those are really important aspects for us as well, getting more hats to it. And so it's really forced teams to, you know, combo him or to um, definitely run away from our nose tackle because he's been able to eat both of these gaps. Uh, we've got a really good one right now who can do those things. He's just a junior. Uh, and so we're really excited to have him back. In terms of the I formation, I'm not sure how many teams actually still see I formation. Uh, for us, we're not going to align any differently. One alignment thing that we can talk about here is that corners could come up and press, like if you're going to get a lot of that type of stuff. And so it really makes things uh, difficult in terms of the blocking. So now you've got five on five uh, and you have your linebackers basically coming in here hard. Um, there's some obviously some different nuanced things in terms of they were able to throw a play action pass off of that. Uh, to their fullback, the Mike linebacker has to understand that, and he would basically be responsible to a certain degree. Um, but for the most part, it's a fairly straightforward way of stopping the run, so you can bring these defense fans in a little bit tighter, bring your corners down here and press, uh, and really stop that run. We've had some good success, or some really good success versus I formation with this defense. So again, um, this talk's not really talking about that, but if anybody wants to contact me and see a few clips of how we play the I formation or how we would play option off the I formation, uh, we certainly would be uh, willing to talk to you and kind of help you out. So this is kind of what the, the talk's gonna talk about. It's gonna really um, revolve around spread run game. Um, and then we'll talk about even some open sets here, some, you know, some double flanker type sets or some double slot type sets. Uh, so in terms of how we try to align one way or another, um, in 2020, one of the things that we kind of switched with our defense is when we have a slot variation like this, now whether the running backs on this side or another side is, is going to be an entirely different little feel in here, but um, 
if we get a slot variation with a running back to that slot side, we actually have our safeties roll. So they're actually going to roll over here and they're going to guard these two slot defenders. Typically speaking, in a cover zero situation, we have the inside slot defender up here around three yards. Okay. And depending on their aggressiveness on throwing bubble passes or whatnot, um, we'll depict on, and again, down in distance, we'll tell you how close he's going to be. <clears throat> if he's a, um, if they really throw a lot of bubble passes, we might even bring this guy up here right around one or two yards, you know, early in the down situations to really start taking that stuff away. Right. And again, we might even you know, play a little bit more cover two behind that so that if somebody does go vertical behind it or if he takes off, we have somebody deep. But for the most part, if we're in cover zero, this is the, the waterfall that we have. So this guy can work vertically this way. This guy can work. Uh, sorry, excuse me, horizontally this way. This guy can work horizontally this way. What we thought that did for our defense was it allowed us to have our six best tacklers in the box versus what they thought were their six best run players here, right? So this is against the four-man front. Here's a little bit more of a traditional spread three-man look, okay, with five guys in the box. You can see how we're aligning here a little bit. In terms of responsibilities, uh, the corners obviously would have the slot and the split end. This linebacker on the outside is kind of in a, a conflict because he's – simultaneously the outside defender, the force defender here, and he's guarding this man. We don't want our Mike guarding this tight end because he's our best tackler. So to waste him on this tight end is very difficult. And I know a lot of offensive guys would say, well, we're just gonna motion this back and really put you in conflict. Yeah, you can do those types of things. And again, if you show those things on film, then we'll just have to practice them and, and do our best against it. But for the most part, this guy's in conflict. So he's the outside uh, fit defender, and he's going to guard this tight end. But again, he has a very similar read to what our corners had in that five down lineman look. If this man is going to go on a pass, right, he's got a really simple read. He's just going to back up, right, and he's just going to play pass first, run second. If this man down blocks, right, if he down blocks on this defensive end, it's a really straightforward read. If he down blocks, I'm going to fly right up here to the line of scrimmage, keep my outside arm and leg free, squeeze the space, right, and go meet my blocker, plain and simple. In terms of our alignment here, the reason why we don't have this linebacker down here, number one, what, what we have found is if you have this linebacker in this spot is you get too many guys in one gap, right? So we want to try to minimize the number of gaps that we're taking away at the same time. Right, we don't need two guys here in this gap. We need this guy to be able to run. So one of the, the couple of the main things that you'll see in the film that we're going to show is you know, like a speed option or a trap or whatnot. Well, since there's two guys in the backfield, we have to have two linebackers here responsible for those two guys. So uh, we play a little bit of a different variation than what other teams do, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more on video. Uh, and, and in those trap situations. But the variation of how we play this linebacker and defense end is probably slightly different than what most teams do. If we get a traditional spread look, like I was saying before, with three down linemen, uh, if this split end is split out, we have a linebacker that uh, will go with it. And then we kind of maintain the box basically the same way. So this man is just responsible out here. This defense end really is now kind of the force defender. In this in this situation so again a lot of things that you're going to get out of that some sort of trap variation some sort of option variation out of this look and and they've been very good if your linebackers are not active uh, that run game can be very difficult to stop um in empty sets uh, again nothing really changes there's a couple i think everybody runs some variation of double slot and uh, for us this is the basic readout and again if there is something in the scouting report that says this is the best receiver, this slot defender here, then we might say, okay, our best corner is going to cover that guy rather than putting a linebacker here. But if this is more of a spread run team where, you know, we're getting a lot of jet motion into sweep or jet motion into option or jet motion into some sort of like trap for the quarterback or something like that, then we're going to leave our linebackers in. So we'll see a couple of variations of that in the film as well. Um, this is starting become, uh, to become a formation uh, that we see a little bit more of, given the offense five down linemen to block with, 
and two guys spread out. And so how is the offense, or sorry, excuse me, how's the defense going to cover that? Um, and, and one of the main things that we have to decide on is what are they doing? So what's the run pass variations that we're getting out of that? Um, what's the percentages we're getting out of that? And for the most part, when teams run this, um, these guys are not like past the, you know, they're trying to run the ball more than what they're trying to throw the ball. And for the most part, if these guys are really good um, players in terms of the run game, a lot of teams aren't going to split them out like this. So a lot of times this is some variation to get the quarterback the ball and you set up some sort of jet sweep action here. Um, so we play this as basically the same thing as double slot. These two tight ends are now going to be slot defenders that the linebackers covered. Uh, we do back them up a little bit. Again, these linebackers are pass first, but again, it's the same read. So if these guys start down blocking, we understand exactly where we need to go in terms of working across the formation or if we're uptight, we can blitz off the backside of that. But again, it's a really straightforward read. Um, we might not see very many of those plays. We haven't seen a ton of that formation as of um, late in the year, uh, but we're starting to see some more teams uh, open their package up by utilizing that, okay? Um, and some teams might be getting into a little bit more single wing type look. So these are the three variations of single wing that we see the most, um, and single wing being the offensive style, not necessarily the formation. Um, so this would be a double wing variation, uh, you know, get these running backs to motion, you know, into the backfield for a handoff or shift over or something like that. Or uh, we had a team this year that didn't even motion. They just lined up and then this guy would run all the way over here. It becomes very difficult to stop when you have a runner running like this across the formation without any motion. So it's tough to shift over. Um, we're, we see a lot of teams that run this, what we would call a stacked look here. Um, can be different variations. This guy can be inside or he can be tucked outside. Um, and, and both have their little nuances. For us, I've drawn this up basically versus our, our base look. Uh, we can cover it like that. So in terms of how we're going to cover these things, um, obviously the corner is still going to have the tight end. First back, his direction would be the linebacker. And then the Mike linebacker ends up being responsible for back his direction. Now, again, that counteracts kind of what you're talking about in terms of, well, coach, I thought you said you didn't want your Mike linebacker covered. Well, yeah, that's true. But at the same time, when we look at the formation week in and week out, um, this might be a situation where we, you know, they might not throw the ball very much out of it. So the Mike linebackers probably still run first versus this formation. And a lot of times it's the tight ends that do most of the route running. It's not even so much these guys. So again, that's week to week. There's different variations of how we line up things, but this is our base look here. Um, we have seen teams run a little bit more of this, what would be a tight bunch here with a, a tight end on the backside. We get a lot of quarterback sweep maybe a reverse coming off the other way and then a lot of passing formations. So for us, there's, you know, there's different ways that you guys can cover this depending on how deep you want to get into the uh, rabbit hole there a little bit. But for the most part, we would probably uh, base look out of this as a cover three. So this linebacker, this corner and this corner would each have a deep third. This Mike linebacker would be, you know, responsible for the hook zones back here all the way to the flat. And this linebacker would be responsible from the center all the way to the other sideline. So underneath of that. And again, a lot of teams are not trying to run underneath routes. They're trying to run something deep against this formation or run sweep. So we find that these this alignment works really well against this look. So again, this corner is not really responsible for a uh, the run first. He's more of a pass first, but uh, this is his gap, right? So this defensive end has this gap. This corner would technically be responsible in here. This linebacker be here, this corner be out there. The Mike linebacker is technically running both directions. This linebacker has a deep third or he's manned up on this man, so he's outside fit, okay? Um, you could run this variation of defense against this look, um, depending on what they're willing to do or not willing to do. But just because of the tightness of these two players versus being like out here, uh, it precludes a little bit more of like both of these backs could like go this way you know they could run the ball this way with that back there or both of these guys could block back this way so you have to treat these formations similar but different all at the same time so uh, again little nuances that come up here but you can see some of the base ways that we line up here uh, in terms of what we're seeing a lot of times in this type of formation you'd also get like a quarterback you know sweep weak 
okay? Or like a power to the weak side, depending on one of these two guys pulling or something like that. Uh, in that case, yeah, uh, you got one, two, three, four blockers. And depending on where this defensive end ends, at, uh, ends up at, if they're blocking or not blocking, you technically have one, two, three, four, five guys that can get there. So you're plus one in the run game this way, you're plus one in the run game going this way. So uh, this is a pretty good way to line up to this uh, defense. And again, playing some sort of cover three in behind that uh, would work as well. Okay, uh, so we're kind of getting to the meat and potatoes here. So those are the basic alignments. If you, anybody wants anything more on that particular uh, alignments or any of the other film that we have for our defense, uh, don't be afraid to ask. Uh, and, and before we get into it, obviously, we're not the first ones to ever run this defense. Uh, there are some teams back in the late 2000s, which Armstrong Ringstead uh, ran this thing. And I think they won two or three state titles with it. The next town over Marcus Baird and Claghorn ran this defense and they won two state titles and four district titles with it. Uh, and now we're running it and we've you know had three or four district titles in six years and uh, been to the dome four times. And um, and so the defense is exceedingly uh, successful in creating stops in the run game and and uh, it can create turnovers if you spend some time and you have good athletes. So um, again, just if you need any more information on that and how it runs, uh, don't be afraid to ask. So as we talk about this a little bit more, uh, we're going to talk about the trap and the zone read games. I do have a uh, film on this for this so we can kind of get into that a little bit more and you can see how we're going to cover this. Okay, so in terms of covering trap, like I, I kind of teased earlier, uh, we cover this maybe slightly differently than other teams do. So I have our assignments in terms of covering trap out of the spread look, uh, whether this be out of an empty set or not, the, the play side end, the nose, the back side end basically have the same responsibilities. They're, they're going to do the same thing basically every single time. The Mike's responsibility and the outside linebacker, if he's in the box, might tweak some things one way or another. Uh, if the mic's there in an empty set, his responsibility is similar um, than it would be in a normal like back look. But for the most part, it's the defensive end, the nose, and the backside end that are going to have the same responsibilities. Okay. Uh, so again, just so we're clear, I'm talking about a three-man front or a four-man front. We're talking about covering a trap uh, into the A gap. So we want to make sure that we uh, take away as many gaps as possible. Um, and we want to try to find a way to get plus one in the run game. Okay, so there are some critical defenders to this play. Like I said, the backside end, nose and uh, play side end. Uh, so for our play side end, that means that the run is coming towards him. We're going to put our hands on the guard to help impede that vertical release to the Mike linebacker. So he has to put hands on. Once that guard is gone, he's going to take an inside flipper to the A gap and minimize space. Go meet your blocker, stay parallel to the line of scrimmage, keep your outside arm and leg free. If we can do that, then that means the running back's got to either bounce to him or to the linebacker on that side, okay? The nose tackle has to get vertical into that center. He has to fight pressure and minimize space. Backside end, if you get a puller, you have to follow into his hip. So again, if our rule and the way we teach our defense bends is to put their hands on guards, if you're firing out to do that, and your guard pulls, it's gonna be really easy for you to follow in his hip pocket. Now, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Um, early in the year, you typically get defensive ends as they kind of start getting back into it, follow that hip no matter what, and you're just going to it and, and, and you don't think through everything that could occur with that play. Uh, so what we get later in the year is you get guys that actually keep their eyes up, and they follow that hip down. And then once, if the quarterback does pull it, which we're going to talk about here in a second, then they can help with that play. So a lot of times, again, you have to get the number of reps and you have to teach it and teach it and teach it uh, in terms of uh, making sure the defensive ends are doing their responsibilities correctly. Um, again, the mic is going to keep pulling guards here. You have to attack the play side guard if you're on that side. Uh, and then Make sure you get downhill. Keep your outside arm and leg free. Minimize that guard. Get vertical to you. And then the outside linebacker box, again, key the back. Uh, cross read with that quarterback. Maintain the outside shoulder to the quarterback. And you're going to be responsible for the quarterback. And so this is what I'm talking about. Um, whoops, sorry. Um, when we cover this play, this would be the general way that we would cover that spread trap look. Now, again, uh, you might get variations, and, and you'll see them on tape where this guard's now wrapping up to this linebacker. 
the, uh, the center stays on the nose, the guard stays on the defense end. But this is the base premise for what's going on here. Uh, in terms of what we're talking about uh, with our linebackers, in this case, just the way the alignment set up the Mike linebackers on the backside. When the guard pulls, again, the defensive end's coming down, he's responsible for the back first, right? So he's going to make a tackle for the loss back here. The Mike linebacker in this situation is going to come down and maintain outside leverage on the quarterback. So the Mike linebacker does not scrape across. And this is what traditionally teams do. Traditionally, the defensive end will sit if his guard leaves. He will sit and maintain leverage on the quarterback. And the, and the linebacker, in this case, the Mike would work across. And that's how they would get to their plus four. And a lot of times that works. There's a lot of teams that do that really, really well. The problem we have with that is that it, it kind of counters what we talk about in any other situation, right? We want our defensive ends falling that guard down, but then all of a sudden when he's the outside force defender, he can't do it. Uh, and, and that just, it makes it a bit of a problem in, ter in terms of teaching. It makes it not play fast. So in this case, defensive ends, how we teach it is that when the guard pulls, you go down with it, right? And you can go make plays. You make a lot of plays tackle for loss, because again, they still only have three guys. So if we can minimize the space here and to get this linebacker to come down and fit and kind of, again, keep his outside arm and leg free, that running back has no other place to go other than back into this defensive end, okay? So obviously some counters to that would be the keeper variation of that uh, with the quarterback and get one-on-one -on -one with this linebacker. And we had some issues early on in this, even in 2021, um, the quarterback would pull that and the linebacker would be basically one-on-one -on -one because the defensive end doesn't follow back into the play, right? So he doesn't, you know, the defensive end comes scraping in there and, uh, and, and basically we would be in trouble because we're basically one-on-one -on -one with the quarterback. And if he's athletic, you're going to really struggle. So uh, this is our basic alignment. So let's talk a little bit about some plays that we might actually utilize that, okay? So here's some basic trap. This is from 2021. Okay, so you can see the base trap play coming here. Defensive end is going to come inside, outside arm and leg free. Okay, minimize space. You can see the backside end here, number 45 coming down through, coming to the back. Okay, and in this case, it's very straightforward. You can see the front side linebacker. Coming downhill, outside arm and leg free is what we want to try to create. We didn't do a good job of getting our hands on the guard there vertically. But again, he's trying to keep his outside arm and legs free and trying to move towards the line of scrimmage. Backside linebacker is going to stay. Okay, he's waiting on that quarterback. So he's trying to maintain leverage on this guy. So in this case, we end up in a situation where we have a lot of guys around the football. We make a nice play. Okay, this is from the previous season, same team. Um, they run this play a lot. So you can see there's a senior defensive end here, junior um, defensive end, minimize space, right? Watch 42, minimize space, outside arm and leg free. There's, there's not a gap there. There's not a gap to run in. Backside defensive ends coming inside right there. Outside linebacker staying outside, okay? Coming down to the line of scrimmage, outside leverage, Okay, as soon as he sees the ball's gone, then he can work across if he wants to. Linebacker didn't do a good job. He needs to attack this thing downhill. This is the second game or first game of the year. Okay, coming downhill, 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 get there. Okay, so that's flying to the football. Another variation of it. This is out of an orbit type look. Okay, and triple option. We had our safety running across with it. So the man that's responsible for this back out of the backfield is this safety right here on the on the 25. So in terms of our linebackers and their alignment, okay, watch uh, the defensive end as that man pulls, he's gonna come downhill to it. This is the same side trap. It's very difficult for the quarterback to make any sort of reads here. So you'll see it in a second. They have a quarterback bootleg that comes off of that. But you can see the defensive end squeezes there. This is the variation I was talking about in terms of what's actually occurring. Now the guard is actually blocking our defensive end, right? So it really is going to come down to this man and the linebacker. Um, our linebacker ends up getting misaligned. So this guy should be coming straight downhill right into this spot as the safety comes across, right? So in terms of what we're shooting for there, there's a gap here 
But again, our defensive end comes downhill and makes a play for us. Okay, so this linebacker should stay in there. And this backside linebacker here, 21 is behind the ref right now. Okay, he has to come downhill and he has to watch this quarterback. He's responsible for the bootleg. And you'll see him do a really good job on that play here in a second off that. Okay, so again, another variation here. Watching the pulling guard coming around, defensive end minimizes space. Outside linebackers maintaining outside leverage on the quarterback. Okay, hands on guards. Boom, just like that. Again, our linebackers sliding out a little bit too much. That orbit motion was really messing with us in that game. Okay, minimize space, minimize space, minimize space. Again, it's a really simple read. His eyes are up, he's sliding in. There's the handoff. Again, we have leverage on the quarterback. Oops. Okay. Uh, this is a little bit more of an inside zone type play. We play this basically the same way. Okay. Defensive end, if your man steps down, you're going to minimize and squeeze space. Okay. Go ahead and make the play. This is what I was talking about a little bit earlier. This guy's in both a run and a pass situation. This outside linebacker is going to watch this tight end. As he down blocks, okay, now his read becomes really, really simple, okay? He's down blocking. I am now the force fit defender, okay? So he can fit outside, and he's going to go make that play that defensive end doesn't. So the minimum defense, backside defensive end has to minimize the space, come inside. Outside linebacker's got to come up, okay, just like that. Pretty good job. On the front side of this, trying to put hands on guards, Mike linebacker probably comes vertical, like into the line of scrimmage a little bit too much, probably should scrape a little bit more. Okay, but he gets out of it. Okay, so off of that play, um, you would end up with variations of what we would call a keeper, where the quarterback would keep the ball off the backside and look like a zone read type of uh, feel. Um, so, as we kind of walk through this play here, again, you're going to get a pulling guard and then you're going to get a quarterback that keeps it. Now you can see that this is not really a zone read. Like he's not really reading anything. He pulled that ball way before that defensive end ever declared anything. So this is generally speaking, just a keeper. I think my quarterback's faster than your defensive end. So I'm going to go ahead and run this play and try to get one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. So this is what I was talking about before where the defensive end has to come in with his eyes up, you know, again, Assuming everybody does their job on the front side of this play and nobody gets outside and we're not creating creases. Assuming everything happens that way, this defense man can come in, minimize space. I love the footwork here. Coming downhill, good angle, okay? Staying square, outside linebacker, again, is staying on the outside fit of this quarterback, okay? And we're coming right there. Now, again, he's not gonna make the play, but what he does is he helps usher that quarterback to the to the one defender we want him to go to, which is that linebacker. If he would come screaming in here and just follow that guard the whole way across with that running back, now that quarterback can come all the way inside of this play and be one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. So if he's any sort of athlete, he can get this linebacker running sideways, cut back up inside of that, right? So we're basically taking away his inside route with this play and he can really only go one direction ends up with, you know, a couple yard gain one way or another, but we'll take that in that situation um, in terms of how we're going to play that. So again, the linebacker could probably maintain a little bit more leverage here, but for the most part, that's exactly how you'd want to play that play. Okay. Here's another variation. Again, a little bit more of a read. Here's our end zone copy of this play. So you'll see linebacker is going to stay home. Our guard does not do a great job of coming off of that play. But again, there was a little bit of a read. So if he leaves that in the belly long enough, that defensive end is going to get, um, you know, he's going to get faked out. He's never going to be right. So, so long as he keeps his eyes up and helps minimize, and again, try to stay parallel to the line of scrimmage, he can come back in this play. But you can really see a really good shot of maintaining outside leverage to that quarterback. And again, he does a good job, stay parallel, stay parallel, stay parallel. This kid was really quick. He burned us in the first game for two touchdowns um, because of exactly how he was exactly this play, um, just pulling the ball off the backside of that. So that's a really good job by the outside linebacker of maintaining that. Um, and again, the final play here in what we're really discussing 
is what would be the naked boot leg off of this look. So again, you're going to get a pulling guard. Defensive end's got to come down inside and they're hiding the ball. So it's really difficult for this defensive end to get any sort of pull read off of that until it's too late. So your linebacker has to maintain leverage here on the quarterback. So he's got some time to make this play. He does a really good job of staying home. You'll see this from the end zone copy here. Here's the linebacker that's going to be in question. Stays home, stays right on him, right? So again, just based off of how we're playing those two guys, maybe that's not earth shattering to you, but it's really important for us uh, to, to play it this way. And our defensive end does a nice job taking away. And again, same situation, inside leverage, over the top, outside leverage, okay? Stay on that quarterback. And again, I think this ends up being some sort of pass play is what they're shooting for just by guys going downfield. But by keeping your linebacker and your defensive end in the correct alignment, you're allowing yourselves uh, the ability to at least shut down the run portion of that. Okay. Um, so now this is a little bit more of a quarterback trap type section. Okay. Um, you can kind of see it here. We probably tighten this up a little bit. Um, but for the most part, again, three receivers over here. You see of us with three guys in this uh, alignment as well. So we've got five guys here and they've got five guys. Okay. Now this is going to be a, a, a trap back towards this man over here and watch our defensive end play in this case. Okay, so as that guard pulls, again, we're, we get a lot of cut blocks. Okay, he does a nice job of staying on his feet. We need to do a better job putting our hands on the guards from this defensive end here. But as he minimizes space, okay, see the inside flipper, really good clip of the inside flipper variation of this. Right there, he's running inside or he's running to me. He's running inside or he's running to me. And I'm going to minimize the space that he gets inside of there. My linebacker does a good job. I would like him to take more steps this way in this variation. But again, he's got to get over this. He's got to get over this guard. So you can see why it's important for this defensive end. Put hands on guards, minimize his easy path to that Mike linebacker so the Mike linebacker can get his outside arm and leg free there um, in this play. Backside defensive end comes in. So now, again, here's four and five. This guy still has this gap, right? The outside linebacker still has this gap. So if this guy would ever kind of bounce over here, this guy's in this position. And again, he's reading this tight end. So as this tight end tries to work across that defensive end's face, now he's just going to maintain. He's going to come down towards that line of scrimmage, minimize space, outside arm and leg free. Okay, it's a really good play. Okay. Another quarterback trap variation here. Uh, we're starting to see a little bit more of this as well. Running backs are going to be blockers. Okay, so again, hands on guards, front side, maintain that space, come off of that, watch the Mike linebacker. So again, we're bumping here because of just what they're doing here. So it's not like the Mike linebacker sitting here and we're running across. We're literally bumping across here. So we're going to bump across. So now we get three over two. Okay, in our alignment, this guy's going to keep his outside arm and leg free. Come downhill. Okay, really nice job on our backside end. So if you guys are starting to get where these runners are coming across and trying to seal your backside, okay, what you have to do to talk about this, when you see that on film, you have to really teach, really, really teach that defensive end to stay skinny into that pulling guard. He has to stay skinny, and this will be the one time we teach him to turn his shoulders from the, um, from the line of scrimmage because if he can do that, if he can do that, he can get up underneath it. This guy can't get tight enough and get the, and, you know, get the pulling guard in there. So in order to do this, stay skinny on this backside pulling guard, okay? Come up and through there, rip through it, okay? Everybody else, and again, just for those guys thinking, well, you're losing your – losing um, the leverage on the backside. Again, we're bumping across. So this linebacker has gone from middle to outside fit. So now he's got this runner all the way through. The Mike linebacker ends up on that guy. The backside linebacker, the outside linebacker here stays in the fit. We're gonna sit, come up and through there. Okay, that's a really good look. Gets a really talented team, okay? Um, so in terms of covering zone read, Okay, really similar. Like I said, I showed you a few clips of what that would look like. 
But if the, if the quarterback is somebody that could pull the ball again, we feel like our linebackers, a better athlete than our defensive end in terms of going one-on-one -on -one with the quarterback. Okay. And we like in terms of the blocking scheme, the way our defensive end can attack something versus our linebacker. A lot of times the linebacker will be caught up in the wash trying to work across and he can't get there. So if our defensive end can work down and keep our linebacker on the backside, we feel like we can minimize the space at the line of scrimmage early and our linebacker who's a better athlete can be one-on-one -on -one with our, with the quarterback. So we feel like that's a really good variation for us. So again, you can kind of read some of those things that are going on there, very similar to track. So this would be the, you know, the way you would kind of talk about this linebacker is going to step out, cover the uh, quarterback defensive end has to take away the back first and then help on quarterback. All these other guys, again, the nose tackles taking two gaps here, defensive ends taking the B gap, outside linebacker is going to end up in the C gap. This linebacker is going to be able to run. Okay. So this is, this is going to variation for us where he can run left and right. Technically um, he doesn't really have a gap here. So we'd like him to learn a B then C inside out. Okay. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and jump into speed option then. In terms of how we cover this play, defensive ends are going to be responsible really for the first back that comes to them. So in terms of speed option versus, I'll show you a dive option look and just show you the variation of that. But in terms of speed option, the quarterback's the first back that comes to him. So when it's the first back that comes to him, he's going to maintain the outside leverage to that back and turn him back inside to the nose tackle if he can get some help right? He wants to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands as much as possible. We really try to teach him to stay parallel to the line of scrimmage so that when he feathers this option out, if the pitch does occur, he can go help with it, right? If he turns, if he turns and does this and the pitch happens, there's another, like I said, a couple of biomechanical seconds that have to occur for him to come back into that play. So maintain and squeeze space so we can get that ball out of the quarterback's hands. Play side linebacker is going to end up on the pitch man. Okay, so the play, line, play side linebacker doesn't freeze. He doesn't sit up there. He goes right to the back immediately. And as soon as he does that, he's maintaining leverage on that um, running back, trying to turn him back now into the defensive end. Okay, so this is a normal speed option play and how we would play it. <clears throat> a couple of the things that are really important, um, and I didn't show you the plays, but Speed option and like quarterback sweep out of this variation look a lot alike. So we teach our linebackers to do the same thing. If both of these backs exit the same way, our linebackers should both be exiting. So this linebacker's got to get across. Now, again, if this guard comes up and blocks this linebacker, he's got to try to get over the top of that. But again, that means that our defensive end and our linebacker on that side are free. Our backside defensive end is probably going to come down the backside of this more than likely. Okay. So if this guard stays on this defensive end, again, it, it doesn't really change how everything occurs. You're going to have one more man free uh, than they can pitch off. So on a double option, they want to try to block the three most dangerous guys and try to beat this defensive end to the spot. They just want to read this defensive end. This is the man they're trying to option. They're not trying to option two guys. They're just trying to option one. So we have found that these linebackers need to be at least on the outside leverage of the guard. He needs to be an outside leverage to that so he can get out over the top of that. Now, again, the problem with that is going back the other direction, he's in a little bit less of a good leverage position. But again, we're more so concerned about the play side than the back side. So again, this linebacker is on cutback anyway. So if he's behind it a little bit, so long as we have our defense men putting hands on guards, we're going to be in good, a good position there. So this linebacker is going to get right to the back. This defense men is going to get right to the quarterback. This linebacker is on cutback. Okay. Um, we do have one constraint play that teams have started to run now. If they see that your linebacker is running out, Okay. They're going to block your defense end, kind of like what triple option teams would do on like a, a zone kick or like, a, um, like some sort of inside zone dive or whatnot. They're going to block the pitch man. So this is a way for their quarterback to keep the ball. So if the defensive ends just, you know, giving them a pitch key all the time, now they're going to give the quarterback an opportunity to get vertical. So if they can get the backside linebacker blocked, if they can get that, 
and they can get your defensive end blocked, there should be a lane running right down the middle of the defense, especially if you show them option and this linebacker, you know, gets scraping out of there, right? So it's really important, again, for these linebackers to work in tandem. This guy's the cutback linebacker. The offensive line cannot have both. They cannot simultaneously block this linebacker and this linebacker. There's just no way that they can do that, right? So you're, you're going to see a couple of variations on why it's important that this linebacker gets across there, but it should be pretty straightforward, okay? So get to my speed option stuff here. Um, I did want to show you a couple of sweet plays. I don't know if anybody's seen these, but these are coming out of that spread look, and these teams are just running straight sweep, okay? So this is a variation of that um, – zone kick type look, but watch these two linebackers work in tandem, okay? They both get horizontal, okay? And downhill at a good angle, okay? So outside fit, okay? Going to meet the block of the first play side linebacker or play side running back that comes to you. Keep your outside arm and leg free, stay parallel. Okay, the quarterback started turning in. So I think that's the reason why he started turning in, but he needs to stay outside arm and leg free. The Mike linebacker is going to come scraping across. So, again, the backside guard does a nice job of putting hands on guard here. And the linebackers are coming down at a great angle here. There's the cutback. That's about as good as you're going to cover that play in terms of exactly where you want your play side and backside linebackers. Okay, another example of this. This ends up being reversed. But you can see where your linebackers are working across here. Okay, getting across and getting across your read. Linebacker comes downhill, keep your outside arm and leg free. Okay. So we'll get into our option here. I'll show you a few speed option looks. This is the speed option that goes to the tight end side. So again, depending on what your tight end's doing, depending on who they're leaving, in this case, this is a really easy and simple read. He's down blocking, okay? So now, on this case, that man turns into the defensive end. So this linebacker is responsible for the back his way. This guy and this guy are both responsible for the quarterback, right? For the most part, the defensive end is going to be responsible for the quarterback. If he is blocked, this guy will now take the quarterback. Parallel to the line of scrimmage, outside arm and leg free. Okay, and again, what they were expecting there, okay, is that two guys would start flowing away, okay? Nice job, minimize space, outside arm and leg free, up and through on the tackle, okay, really good job. Same team, this team ran a lot of options, so I apologize uh, that we don't have a lot of variation here, okay? Again, hands on guards, play side defensive ends over here, hands on guards, minimize the path that that guard can get vertical, okay? Linebacker is going to go right to the pitch man immediately, right to it. And again, defensive end, and this quarterback did a good job of holding that thing as long as he could. Okay. Play side linebacker gets right to his back, tries to get on the outside shoulder, turning him back inside. Backside linebacker comes scraping across. He's the cutback, probably gets a little bit too vertical, but you can see the reason why it was important that he gets all the way okay, into a good angle. So he probably needed to stay down. That's what I would tell this linebacker. He needed to stay a little bit more at an angle inside out of that pitch man. So he's got to work both the backside of that quarterback and the backside of this running back. And he probably gets a little bit too vertical based off of where they're at. Okay, another good example of what we're actually going to see here. A little bit of motion to it. Hands on guards. Defensive end has the quarterback. Outside linebacker immediately to the pitch man. Boom, boom. Okay. Really straightforward stuff. And again, they can't block everybody. They can't block everybody. So this guard wants to stay on this defensive end to help him out. Again, cut back lane for that linebacker. Inside out. One more variation here. Again, we'll kind of fast forward here a little bit for you. Okay, both guys exit. Both linebackers need to exit. In this case, we get really lucky. Really, really lucky. This is that variation I was talking about just a second ago. I'll show you a, a, more of an end zone copy. 
but this guard is going to actually stay on this defensive end. Okay. So if your linebacker does not get across on the cutback lane, if he does not get to this spot, this quarterback, theoretically speaking, would be really easy to turn up inside of here. Now, what they're doing is they're running a reverse, right? So everybody, this linebacker clears out, his defensive end tries to go around here, and there's a nice little reverse path here. Okay, so it, it does become a little bit of a headache trying to get everybody in the right spot. You can see how that play would have been really good there. Okay, but they ended up running the fake of that and then running the option off the backside. Okay. Okay, another little speed option. Pitch, running back, inside out. Okay. Outside arm and leg free, outside arm and leg free. Defense man comes back inside to help. Last variation here. So again, hands on guards, hands on guards, hands on guards. Over and over and over again to your defensive ends. Inside out, outside linebacker to the pitch man, other linebacker on the cutback. Again, maintain your outside leverage, okay? Our linebacker is probably a little bit too far inside. Need to be a little bit more outside, but again, good rally to the ball by all of our linebackers here. Um, this is a dive option variation here. So again, the rules aren't any different in terms of generalities. So the defensive end is going to take the first back to his side. The outside linebacker is responsible for the next man. Now, I'm not super excited about how these two were lined up in this play, but the theory is still the same. Okay, so hands on guards, really nice job taking away the pitch man, coming to it. Okay, this outside linebacker is responsible for the quarterback. So on that keep, okay, now we've maintained leverage. Now I'm not, again, not super excited about where this kid was at. He's technically the cutback lane for all of this. Our defensive end keeps his head up. Kid doesn't have the ball. Outside linebacker has the pitch man. Here comes the backside end. So again, these are just different ways on how we can kind of maintain this option, but that's just the other variation. So again, the way we would play is the defensive end takes the first back to him. So whether that be the quarterback on the speed option or the running back on the dive option, he takes the first back to him. The outside linebacker takes the next person, so whether it be the pitch man or the quarterback. You have to drill those early in camp, but that's the base premise. Okay, here's a little bit of an inverted veer for those of you that uh, are starting to see this as well. So again, for the offensive line, it's the same blocking scheme. Defensive end needs to take hands on guards. Okay, first back to him. Now, this is inverted, right? So you have to practice this variation. In this case, he has the quarterback, okay? That running back's not coming to him. The quarterback's coming to him. So he's going to have the quarterback. He's got to take that. Outside linebacker, again, this is just a variation of speed option. Just a variation of that, just how they're going to get to it. Okay, that's a pretty good job in terms of this kid just makes a play here. Outside arm and leg free. Defensive end doesn't really come off that quarterback very easily. Okay. And here's that constraint play. Okay, a little bit of a zone type kick here through the end zone copy here. So we're going to watch this defensive end on this side. Okay, and you're going to watch why this becomes such a dangerous play. In this case, the way the offense is trying to block this thing is that they're trying to give their quarterback a keeper opportunity right up the middle. So the way we would have to cover this, obviously, is that this back's got or this linebacker's got to go all the way to the back on the other side. Okay, so he's got to come all the way to the outside here. Boom, boom. So if your defensive end, again, keeps his outside arm and leg free and this guard stays on, they're going to get his feet running. So this is the lane they're trying to create, right? They want their quarterback to be able to keep this. Well, there's only a couple ways. Either this guard has to hook this defensive end or he just has to basically zone him, okay? And if he wants to run, just run him out, okay? So here's the lane. Now that precludes that your center can beat the nose tackle, which a lot of times in the average eight-man football game that can occur. Okay, but it's really important to put your hands on guards, okay, by this defensive end and for this linebacker. You see both of these guys exit that you exit, okay? This time, we're late to that play. So you can see the reason why this is important. This uh, defensive end probably should be snugged up here a little bit more, and he needs to put his hands on this defensive end, 
and he's to be coming downhill to it. Okay, so in the re, uh, original copy, as you can kind of see it here, you can kind of see a little bit of the backside end variation here. Okay, so they're gonna just try to run him out. Outside linebacker comes to the pitch man. That's exactly where he needs to go. Now the defensive end ends up having to make this play. Nose tackle ends up having to make this play for him. Okay, so as we kind of look at that end zone copy, it's important, again, fight pressure, work down the line of scrimmage. Not everything's gonna be pretty, not everything's gonna be perfect. Again, we don't see a, a ton of that constraint play yet, but as we start to see more speed option out of this look, you're gonna to start to see a little bit more of that constraint play. Okay, so we just have to make sure that we keep our hands on. Everybody else does the responsibility. The backside end has to put his hands on that guard. This linebacker has to get across there. This would be the lane that that linebacker has to take. And you can see as that play opens up, that's exactly the lane that the quarterback wants to take. Okay. So for the most part, it's covered okay. They get a few yards, but it's, again, it's a good constraint play for a team that wants three or four yards. There it is for you. Okay. Um, I did put one triple option play in here. And again, variations upon variations here, but on an orbit, defensive end is going to take the first back to him. Okay, again, eyes up, squeeze. In this case, the quarterback pulls it. Okay, so now he can kind of get back into it. So in terms of how this is all going to feather out, technically, this defensive end is going to have the back. The outside linebacker is going to put leverage to the quarterback. 10 is going to motion across and put leverage to number six. In this case, 33, our defensive end does see that the ball is pulled. So he's able to make this play. Outside arm and leg free, that's a pretty good job, right? That's a really good job into how to do the triple option out of those variations. Thank you guys for allowing us to talk about our, our defense, our 3-3 flex defense against the spread and how we try to play things. Again, sometimes they're a little bit non-traditional, but uh, we're starting to see a lot of great success. The more we coach it, the better off we're going to be. Um, if you guys need any information, whether that be on um, the base defense, how we play against power run, how we play against spread pass, any of the coverages that we run. Don't uh, hesitate to contact me. That's how uh, I got better in coaching as well. Just make contact uh, with coaches, ask some questions. Um, for the most part, the community is pretty good in terms of what they are. Again, thank you, uh, Nicholas, for allowing us to put some stuff out there on eight man. Um, any eight man coaches out there, please put your stuff out there. We need as much information out as possible to keep our game going and to help people get better. Thanks very much. Go Hawks.